Hi everyone, this is Dan Aesthetics Medical located here in Ottawa, Canada. Thanks so much for joining. Today we are talking about myomodulation, a term coined by the one and only Dr. DeMaio. Basically what it means is the change in activity of a facial muscle whenever you place filler around it. It can be used in theory to address certain complications such as facial palsy or structural defects. It can even be used for the natural process of aging or what I prefer to say is maturing or maturation, really anything other than aging. Stay tuned, it's going to be fun, we're all gonna learn a few things. So to break things down, we have to have a little bit of origin. And basically, our muscles, broadly speaking, in our face have two major functions. They're elevators and they're depressors. There's also some sphincters here in the eyes and in the mouth, but we're gonna focus on the elevators and depressors because Dr. DeMaio in theory feels that there's a natural tug of war between these two. Let's talk about that. So up until the age of 25, the tug of war battle is being dominated by the elevator muscles. For example, the zygomaticus major, take a look at it. Originates here on the bone, inserts all the way down here, and it goes over this curve here. That curve is your OG curve and is primarily caused by bone, but more importantly, the deep fat, that souf that we call it. Now at about the age of 25, 30, we start losing that deep fat. And what happens is that deep fat was acting like a pulley lever. And the muscle had some tension there from here to here because of that fat. Now because the fat has shrunk, now we have a little extra laxity in that muscle. And then what happens is our smile doesn't have that natural upturn. Our smile becomes a little bit more horizontal because the next muscle below it is your isorious muscles. So this is now taking over. Add a few more years, we're getting to about 40, 45, and now with further fat loss in the face and gravitational pull, now unfortunately our DAOs start taking over. And even at rest, we now have this downturn corners of the mouth. So in theory, if we want to restore someone's natural upturned smile, what we need to do is replace that deep fat loss with some filler. And where do we place it? We place it underneath the muscle, onto the bone, recreating that natural pulley labor system. And it works. So now that we understand by placing filler underneath the muscle, it's going to enhance its efficacy or strengthen it. But guess what? Placing filler on top of a muscle will relax it or partially block its effect. A good example is that DAO. We don't inject filler into or underneath the muscle. We always fan it just over top of it. And what that does is partially blocks that effect. It relaxes the muscle and brings it back to its natural position. Now the last key takeaway with myomodulation is that when we support a muscle with filler, it indirectly affects any connected muscle to it. For example, the temporalis. If we were to inject filler into the temporalis muscle, we can, it's not possible to inject underneath the muscle. It's too stuck to the bone. So what happens is we inject almost inside the muscle or on top of it, never underneath. Therefore, we're always relaxing the temporalis muscle. So if this is relaxed, then it's going to contract the muscles that are touching. Take a look at the frontalis. We inject filler here, we see that the tail of the eyebrow kicks up. Not only that, the zygomaticus major here ends up contracting as well, pulls up a little bit. So it actually turns a little bit of the up corner of the mouth. It's really interesting, but they all have that effect. So understanding these variances are really going to help you with regards to understanding where to place this filler. Are you going to put it underneath? Are you going to put it on top? And whenever you're doing so, what other muscles are going to be affected? Okay, so now that we at least have a better understanding of how this works, let's try and put it into practice here. If some comes in with a right-sided Bell's palsy, everything's drooping from the forehead to the eye, to the corner of the mouth, to the nose, everything is all drooping on this side. What can we do? Well, let's start from the top. The forehead needs to be contracted up. How can we do that? Well, we need to connect it with the temporalis muscle. Inject that with filler. That's going to relax this muscle and that's going to kick this up. What can we do about a droopy eye? Well, this orbicularis oculi goes all the way around here. So we need to get underneath it and place filler underneath in order to restore it and also cause that to contract a little bit more. The mouth is drooping all the way down. What can we do? There's two things we can do. We need to bring it up with its smile. So we need to restore that pulley lever system by putting a bolus underneath the zygomaticus major. And also at rest, we wanna bring it up. So what we can do is put filler on top of the DAO, hoping to restore it to its natural position. 
Now let's focus on the non-affected side. This side is hyperdynamic. This side is in constant motion. It's trying to adapt and compensate for the palsy side. For someone to try and close their eyes, it takes so much strength that they're using every muscle in the face, including the platysma bands, just to try and close that eye. As a result, the eye ends up becoming a little smaller. They're showing less of that sclera or the white, so we need to do something to relax it. The other thing is the mouth. The mouth doesn't have a neutral position here. Now it's upturned, and we need to relax that. So what can we do? We're not gonna put any filler here because we don't wanna contract this muscle and we don't wanna contract the abicularis ocula either. We wanna relax it. So we're going to put filler just on top of it right around here. The other thing that we wanna to do to fix the smile is place filler just on top of the zygomaticus major and minor. The other thing that we can do is place it just on top of the rhizorius. Now in severe cases of palsy, neuromodulators do play a role. Unfortunately, because of Health Canada rules, I can't disclose any potential effects of neuromodulators. So if you have any questions, please send me a shout and I'll be able to guide you on where to find the appropriate information for that. So that's it for me today. It was a really interesting topic and I appreciate you being here. This is just the basics of myomodulation. It's to educate the public, giving them information of what potentially fillers can do for them. And if you're an injector or a provider, Remember, respect your learning curve. If you want to get into this, know myomodulation like the back of your hand, know your anatomy very well, especially origin and insertion and the danger zones. That's it. Until next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.